tonight I'm going to be talking about uh, artificial intelligence and the way we apply it to an industry that is uh, quite old-fashioned and that we're trying to change, basically. Just a bit of uh, an overview, we are a startup, we were founded uh, about three years ago. Uh, we have received uh, about 10 million worth of funding and we have a team of about 37, 38 people right now in London, UK and in the Bay Area in San Francisco. Um, yeah, that's it. So what is this? So the point with like the first two slides is that AI and machine learning and deep learning and this field in general is a very, uh, let's say, overused uh, definition and overused terms. A lot of people talk about it. Uh, and this is the popularity of the term machine learning on uh, a Google search. So that shows you that it's been gaining a lot of momentum in the last years and a lot of people talk about it, a lot of people are doing things with it, which is great, of course, it's, it's the future and, and all those things, everybody knows about that. Uh, but most things, I mean, I realized, and you know, in over the last months and years, that most things that people, let's say, talk the most about are things that aren't really, and I, I can actually, you know, um, let's say, agree with a lot of things that Stephen was saying because a lot of things that people use AI for aren't really like a real life application of AI, just like more of a way of like using it for like amusement or like, you know, seeing how that could work out with this thing and with this other thing without really like solving any, without starting, the point is without starting from a problem, starting from like, I want to use AI. Uh, these are two things that are very popular. So you, you know, Google and um, you know was very uh, it was very popular the application that they had on cats and dogs, and they left this algorithm working on um, videos on YouTube. And at at some point, it could figure out what a cat and a dog is, which is great. Of course, you know everybody likes uh, cats and dogs, uh, and also you know emotional recognition. Uh, a lot of these things are, let's say, very. Um, easy to talk about and very, you know, um, they get a lot of momentum on the news and everyone talk about them. We don't do that. We are, let's say, we have a much more pragmatic approach to artificial intelligence and we started from, let's say, we started from like the idea that we had about a problem that we wanted to solve compared to, uh, you know, the way, w with the, with the, you know, here's this algorithm we want to apply to something. So, this is what we do. So we do um, basically these things. <laughs> it's car insurance, you know, industrial infrastructure, x-rays. These are all things that um, imply visual recognition. So we apply artificial intelligence to Im image recognition. That's what we do. That's what we saw. We try to make these tasks efficient and we try to make these tasks uh, as hassle free and as cost uh, efficient as possible. So these, we thought that these are problems that today uh, are very, these are, you know, sorry, industries that today are very inefficient because of visual tasks and because of like humans uh, basically looking at images and trying to understand what they do and you know what should be done to fix them and if that's a real problem. But we think that with machines and with our algorithms, these can be solved in a much more efficient way, put it in a simple way. Um, so who we are where, when we were born, so, and why, you know, why is like deep learning being so, let's say, uh, efficient and being used so much, uh, especially attractable. So we, this is this is a, a, a graph that plots the uh, uh, vision error rate. So it's the error uh, percent, average percentage rate of the error uh, of a machine recognizing something from an image. Uh, you know, the first use of deep learning was 2012, and it starts decreasing very quickly. Uh, in November 2014, Tractable, Tractable was born, uh, and in November 2015, machine accuracy surpasses humans. So what what that means? That means that actually, um, after February 2015, applications of deep learning and artificial intelligence are actually useful because, the, you know, machine learning and deep learning has surpassed humans in terms of average error. So it's actually convenient now and efficient to get machines to do things rather than humans. 
And so uh, we have basically, you know, that's that's just a story. You know, that doesn't mean that Tractable has caused uh, machine accuracy to surpass humans. It's just like we were born in that in that you know historic period, and from there we have basically come up with a technology that was fit for purpose to be applied to uh, the problem that we wanted to solve, which is car insurance. So this is uh, a very uh, easy to understand slide uh, for people like me that are not technical. So uh, just put, very, put in, in a very s simple and easy way, um, training an algorithm, uh, training an AI requires a lot of data. Uh, and it requires a lot of data and labels, which is you know, the labels is the things that explain what this image is, what this data is. So that requires a lot of time. Uh, and it requires a lot of effort in terms of how many people you put on labeling things. Uh, and the more information you have, the better it is for the algorithm. So we have come up with, uh, let's say, a set of features that allows us to be efficient on the labeling side and also, let's say, efficient on the algorithm side. But that's, that's, that's this part and that part. So on the first two sides, so dimensionality reduction, that means that images can be different uh, between one another in many different ways. This, if, if we call it as a vector, you know, it can be like hundreds of dimensions. And our algorithm basically plots the differences between these images on a 2D uh, graph. What that means is that it helps the teacher understand what kind of images are completely off scale and they're not interesting for us. For example, if you receive an a claim from a client that is, you know, pictures of uh, a front bum bumper, you know, a bonnet or a headlamp, and then there's a picture of a uh, an invoice or a picture of, you know, the inside of the engine. Uh, the AI will understand that those are not relevant and so it won't, it won't give them to the teacher so that the teacher doesn't waste time to look at them and understand what they are. So that's the first one. The second one, information retrieval. So that means that the algorithm can, let's say, self-label some of the images and so and it will only present to the teacher the ones that are, mo that are hardest to label. So that means that the algorithm can self-select what kind of information it needs the most help with. And so the teacher can focus on the things that are most needed by the algorithm. So yeah, it will allow the teacher to focus on the most important uh, and the, the things that the algorithm struggles the most with. Third, transfer learning. So that's very important. So that means that if you have a hundred million images of a uh, of a wing of a car, but you only have a million images on of the image of a bump of the bumper of a car. Uh, the some features that are in common between these two things, the algorithm can transfer to the other one, to the, for example, to from the front, the, the one of the wings to the bumper. So that means that in order for the algorithm to be efficient on the bumper, it will require much less information. So that cuts down the amount of information that is needed for the algorithm to be trained. And that saves loads of time. So all these things say, you know, are things that make the technology efficient and fit for purpose and ready to be a product instead of just being something that is developed you know, in academia and as struggles to be applied, basically, to something in real life. The fourth one is a bit more engineering, which is, uh, you know, we have an infrastructure that is fit for purpose. And so, um, you know, when clients send us things, uh, it, they, the responses are going to have to be quick. And so, in order to support all the infrastructure, we need uh, sorry, you know, support of the activity. We need an infrastructure that can support, you know, millions of interactions every minute, and that is able to sustain the amount of data that the AI processes. Basically, that's 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 basically the four the four main features of our of our technology. Um, what is so? What is our product? You know, now we talked about technology and the way we apply it, but what what do we apply it to? So this is. Uh, the top the top layer is the way an estimate is usually done. So there's a car accident, you go to a body shop, which is a repairer or someone that someone that fixes your car. Uh, the body shop, uh, you know, writes an estimate. So you know they look at the car, try and understand how much it costs, take some pictures, send it over to the insurance. The insurance will then have a look at the pictures that the um, body shop send them. 
and we'll try to understand whether that's a good estimate or not and how much money they should pay. Um, after that, the claim is set all the cash, basically. Um, what is the trick? So the body shop will always try, not always, but most times try and overestimate uh, the amount of money that is due to the client uh, because, you know, more expensive parts, unnecessary repairs, favors to the client, however you want to call it. Uh, so the insurance need to, you know, make a good effort to avoid that, basically. Uh, with our software, our software takes care, basically, uh, entirely of the second bit, which is, uh, the insurance side of the estimation. So the um, body shop will send over the image to the insurance. The insurance will run it directly into the AI and the AI will uh, come up with an estimate of how much it costs to repair the car straight away. And so the insurance will not going to have to deploy any human effort on, or very minimal human effort on the uh, estimation. And that means that they can save money uh, because it's you know a software as a service is much cheaper than employing people. It can save time, uh, you know, as said, you know, can uh, aim to settle the claim in minutes, uh, and it can rely on something that is very very accurate, basically. Uh, and then this, the claim is settled cash. Uh, this is the our current product. Uh, the vision for let's say uh, for the next release of the product is that after an accident, the customer will take the picture himself with the phone and then send it directly into the AI who will run anti-fraud checks, it will run the quality, regardless of the quality of the images, it will run the anti-fraud checks, it will run uh, scans on the, how, ma how many parts that we need to, re to do we need to make that repair, how much labor is required, how much paint is required, and then we'll produce an estimate without even having the body shop involved in it. So the process will be absolutely uh, revolutionized by the way the AI can act. And basically the body shop will only be the person that substitutes the parts rather than the person that writes the estimate with a bias implied in it. So this is where the industry is going and this is how it can change. Um, basically it can change on top of changing processes, change behaviors of people, which is ultimately the goal of what we're doing. So this tells you, you know, how much of a problem there is Right now, things are done the same way they were done 50 years ago, and how much it can change with our technology. Um, what is the uh, advantage? So what, is, is it disruptive? We, we think it is. Uh, in terms of cost, it's a fraction, as I said, a fraction of a dollar for every image that we process by, in the AI, compared to an average cost of between six and three hundred dollars per claim. So that's that's pretty pretty. Uh, um, clear, I think. Uh, in terms of time, as I said, up to a thousand images per second, aim to settle a claim in minutes, while it would take, you know, a week on average to settle a claim. I don't know if you guys have, you know, got an accident on a car recently, but it takes a lot of time to get it reviewed and to get your money back. So that is, you know, a revolution. Also on the customer experience side, which is the most important thing, as I said, there's a problem to be solved. Uh, in terms of performance on the insurance side, I mean, insurances will be able to basically rely on something that is accurate and is always equal to itself and is reliable. So also, you know, forecasting, um, budgeting, literally everything that you need to plan, they can count on something that is always reliable and is always applying the same method to uh, the algorithm, to, sorry, to the estimation uh, problem. Well, you know, with humans, it can always vary and there's always many things that can go wrong. Um, and that's basically uh, what I have to say with regards to the product. Now I'm going to show you a demo of the product, which is, I bet, what you're all here for, even though you didn't know I was having a demo. Um, so what I'll do now, I will, um, so let me show you one thing. Does this work? It does work, right? Yeah. So what I'll do now is I will, uh, so this is a claim we have received, uh, you know, a few days back from a client. This is a real case study, basically. This is a car, you know, this is the average uh, image that the a client and insurance will send us in order to, you know, to say test the AI. So there's, you know, pictures of the inside of the car, you know, irrelevant things, and then there's the real stuff. So this is what we need pictures of the car, whether it's damaged, where it's not damaged, this is completely irrelevant, for example. But this is all things that they will send us, uh, because that's what the, bo the body shop send them. 
what we uh, are going to do now, I'm going to demonstrate how the uh, AI makes sense of the things and how it produced the estimate. So this, this number that I'm picking up here is the, uh, it's got a name that I don't remember, but it's like the ID of the model of the car so that the AI knows what uh, model is it and what parts does it need. So what I'll do now, I'll drag and drop these images here and then the magic will happen. So now the AI is making sense basically of the images and is, this is, oh, I didn't mention it, that the demo is only for the front panel so it will, it will discard everything that is on the rear panel, on the, on the rear of the car. Uh, and now it's saying, you know, this is a right headlamp, there's a right fender, there is a hood, uh, and it's, you can actually see that right now the AI has already made sense of all the reality and it's already discarded all of this. So these, this, this is telling us these are not relevant. And these are all not relevant. This is like, when I, yeah, this is all the, the rear of the car has said. These are all not relevant. And if we go here, the hood, for example, these are all images of the hood, so that works. Left headlamp, yes, yes. So everything that includes these parts, the AI will put in there. So what happens now? Now the AI will try and make sense of the damage on those parts and try to tell us whether that's a replaceable part. Sorry, whether that's a repairable part or that's uh, that uh, or, or that can, has to be replaced basically in order to be adjusted. So now the AI is working and, and you know it's interacting with the server basically right now and he'll come up with yeah so what he's telling us right now is that the right headlamp is okay the right fender is okay the hood needs to be replaced so the hood is damaged the left fender is damaged but it can be uh, repaired so it doesn't have to be replaced F left headlamp headlamps always need to be replaced because you can't fix a broken headlamp uh, and the front bumper needs to be replaced. So if you look at the images, so for example, the, f the left fender, the, so the fender is this, this piece here, so it's this piece here, th that panel, uh, it's uh, damaged, but it can be replaced. So you see it's displaced there, and there's probably some scratches and all the rest of it, so that can be replaced, uh, that can be uh, repaired. The hood, for example, it's too damaged here, so it needs to be replaced. Um, and the same goes with the left hand lamp and the front bumper, which is this part here. While the right fender, there's no damage on that, so it's not going to be replaced. Same goes with the right, right uh, headlamp. So the AI is telling us that some parts need to be repaired, some parts need to be replaced, some parts are okay. What it's going to do now is going to tell us how much it costs to repair it. So basically basing on the parts of the cost of the parts and the cost of the labor and the cost of the paint as you as you see the labor is the most expensive thing as always in these replaces but is able to tell us how much it costs straight away so this happened in a few seconds so imagine that if you were to take these pictures on your car after an accident and you will send it to the to the ai the ai will tell us it will tell you straight away how much it costs to repair it which is unbelievable i mean from a client point of view it's like uh, it, it wouldn't. It wouldn't imply, you know, going in different places and actually getting your time and getting your effort to make it repair. You just take the pictures and send it straight to the AI, who runs everything that he has to run. So this is uh, how the product works. This is, of course, a demo. Um, it's you know, it's got much many many more parts. It's got the rear uh, the rear parts too. Um, and that's basically uh, it. So let me put on. So, and this is uh, you know this is basically just a, a very quick overview on how our take is on uh, what our take is on AI and how AI can be applied to real world problems and solve them. Uh, if you want to get in touch with me, I'm probably the easiest point of, of contact in the company. Uh, I'm the head of people operations. For our vacancies, look at AngelList, look at tractable.ai slash careers and stay in touch on all of our socials. Uh, we are very active on the socials. No, it's not true, but once a week at least. Um, and that's it.